Hey, what's going on? I'm David Palmer and Leo King, and I'm sitting with the creators of the festival, Don't Trip. It's good to have you both, Danger House and Brett Rubin. We're going to be talking about Don't Trip and what's it all about? How are you both doing? Good, doing man. Well. Very good well. Day. Yeah, it's great and to have you both. So how was Don't Trip created? Uh, it was uh, all kind of stemming from a search for myself, um, looking for answers on, you know, why I always was searching for purpose. Um, you know, I, I mean, that's a big part of spirituality is kind of looking past the religion of, you know, the indoctrinated world, um, which led me to a lot of soul searching psychedelic substances to help me get to that point, um, which led me down to Tulum um, for multiple years where I'd go down there and enjoy parties for, uh, you know, the January time uh, was around my birthday. I always decided to take, you know, a couple weeks off around that time and reset myself. And uh, I noticed when I'd go down there, I'd always have very vivid dreams and, um, kind of an un, I didn't quite understand what was drawing me down there. It was a connection to the land, um, which eventually led to a Kundalini awakening while I was down there and saw a lot of symbolisms um, that, you know, from ancient culture and um, kind of answered my search of what religion was in that moment. Um, and experienced Expanding from there, that led me into the occult and learning more about the symbolisms behind the triangle and what it meant to me, and that meant home. Um, and home was, it seems like the triangle was the first type of home for us as humans. It was our first shelter, it was a teepee, it was, you know, it was the first structure in which was home for people. Um, and I think, um, you know, having a broken home myself and being kind of, um, abandoned a little bit from my parents, they, they weren't, they were, they weren't bad parents. They just weren't completely there. And, um, I think I was missing that in my life and, you know, it, it's kind of a deep story, but you know, that's, that's basically the roots of it. And I think, um, it made me realize what my anxieties were in life. And um, I came back from this awakening very tuned in, which I was not used to before. I knew I knew I was em empathic in some sort. Uh, when I spoke to people, I could feel a lot about them, um, kind of knew their history a little bit, but never really understood what that meant in the bigger picture. Um, that has unfolded, um, through personal work and realizing what the energies of an empath is and kind of evolving that, um, is that pretty much like going through all those experiences? Like how did it lead you to feel about making an event about calling it don't trip, like realizing that through life and. Cause it reminds me of like rave scene when we were young, right? Like the empathic of like how we had all these amazing moments when you meet people and you just seem to feel people out and people can trip out at events. They can do things. And it's always that like, well, what was I tripping on? Is it like, that's how I kind of relate to it. But like, what's the, the core for you that really through all those experiences made you feel like I'm going to create something called don't trip. Um, it was the fact that this world is very difficult to accept. Um, you know, I, I feel a lot of pain for humanity. Uh, I feel a lot of concern in that case. Um, and I know that I'm not alone in this. Um, and I felt like I, 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 was, I was overwhelmed. I, I'm tripping. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly concerned about my financial status. I'm always concerned about someone's perception of me. And when you get down to like the brass tacks of it and you go inwards, you realize that a lot of this stuff does not matter. Right. You know, it's, you're, you're, I'm, I'm tripping about this. And so sharing that message with others 
makes me makes pe people feel comfortable. It you know releases their anxieties, and I noticed that you know the importance of that is to me in a festival is finding that community their community with within people, and that's the family that I've been missing, um, that energy of family that I've been missing, and I wanted to put that out in the world and, and do good and put my impact in the world and through that was my DJ career, my hobby, my passion, my, uh, my desire for art. I went to school for design. Um, I've always been into art. Um, I think that was kind of a release when I was younger <clears throat> and, you know, I wanted to continue that on and what balance was my art and my music and my, you know, direction and spirituality after my awakening. And I felt that was my balance. It was, it was the art, the music and the spirituality, which to me is the triangle, you know? Right. And, um, yeah, that's kind of where it came from. Well, it's kind of crazy. Cause when Brett came into the picture, I know both of you separately. Yeah. So it's like, how did you two connect and what is don't trip for you, Brett? Cause you bring so much, I almost feel like from, you both come from, two different places and bring it all together. It's so beautiful. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, Eric and I have been friends for over a decade. Before I ever met you, he and I wow. were connected. I used to book him in Vegas and I booked him at a festival I threw back in 2011 or 12 that never quite took off. Right. But it, 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 it lit my fire to want to build something my way or our way. Eric and I have a really in tune we're working with each other where a lot of things sometimes we don't even speak about but we both know that we feel strongly a certain way towards it and it, it's kind of an against the grain way of thinking um but it's also you know i've been djing and throwing events for over 20 years and i've watched the industry change i've seen how it was and how it is and you know a lot of it takes a lot of effort for these artists to get to the big stage where, where you see some of these big names, you know, and a lot of the people at the top, I hate to say it, you know, it's bullshit. There's fluff, you know, they're, they're, they're paying someone to make their music. They got a huge marketing and PR team. And, and sometimes there's no substance behind it. And it's, it's ruining the industry in my opinion. And all these festivals book these same acts because people want to see these people that they've heard of. And we want to be different. We want to expose really good talent. We want, you know, you, may, you might look at a flyer of ours and not recognize any names, but you know when you go to this, the festival or to the event we're doing that every stage, no matter what time, is going to be a vibe and, and everything's going to flow. Um, even across genres, there's still this synergy and consistency through it. And I, I feel like, you know, that's, that's us. You know, that's, <clears throat> that's where we want to take this thing. That's where we, we wish the industry still was. And if we can have any say in it, which we're trying to, you know, we want to change it back. Like back in the day, you know, agencies would pick up artists that were dope and they would, or labels and they'd put them in their camp and they'd build them up. And now it's like, you have to have hundred thousand followers on your own and, and hit it out of the park before anyone even wants to mess with you because they're lazy. They don't want to do the work. Um, and so that's part of our, our bigger plan too, is to do some artist management stuff and help with that. And in a perfect world, like we would just dig, dig, dig and find the coolest, newest, dopest, most talented acts. And that's, that is what we're doing, but we're still, you know, walking the line and still getting some names that people recognize and some, you know, some older names and things like that. But um, we're still trying to navigate some of those components of it. You know, we're right. still new and seeing what works and what doesn't, but you know, it's all about for us finding that really cool up and coming talent and, and exposing them and, and giving them that platform from, from the, the acts, the music acts to the artists, to our stage builders, like Michelangelo and Aaron and Chris, like we, we want these people to have that stage to, to, to do what they do best. And, and I think through our network of over 20 years, each in the industry, like it runs deep and there's a lot of talent in there. And a lot of those people don't get the attention or the, respect that they deserve. And so that's a big important thing for us. I think that's awesome. I think it's cool too, because like, Brett, you've been everywhere, but it's really been Vegas, which is such a crazy market in itself <laughs> to just navigate. And then Danger House has been to LA, Orange County, and been doing every kind of event. 
whether it's from bars to clubs to everything and, and seeing that market go up and down. And so it's almost like both of you have these crazy backgrounds that have been through it all and are taking it together and bringing that, that vibe that you both together have that just you don't even have to say anything and just know and bringing it together. And it's like, you know, I'll bring up like things like Coachella. I used to go to Coachella back in the day when it was all about like Golden Voice bringing out talent that was, you know, really good that you're gonna know because you go see it. Or when you go see a DJ, it's like, I wanna go and I hope the DJ is playing a track or something I haven't heard before instead of hearing like a concert, almost like what you always hear, right? You wanna be surprised, you wanna be wowed in a way. Yeah. And I think that's what's so great about what you two are bringing. One thing um, about the symbolism that I noticed is like in the stage, especially in Utah now, at where Don't Trip is being held this year and it was last year, is that you guys had all that stuff built, like, and it stands there throughout the whole entire year. Yeah. I don't know any other festival that does it. Everybody does this huge big tear down and tear up and bring it up and 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 they change it, but there's something like about the organic part about that. I don't know if you want to talk about them. Shambhala is definitely one that has a similar vibe. It's a private mm -hmm. land and they've been for years since they started it, just expanding and growing and, and creating more and more and more infrastructure that stays permanent. And I mean, that's the way to go for, I mean, if you, if you have that liberty to, to leave stuff there, I mean, for us, it, it was more about incorporating the natural elements of the forest and of the resort and the, the land that we're on. Um, then bringing some soulless trussing stage and video wall like everyone else, you know, that's just not yeah, what we're yeah, trying I mean, to do. Yeah, buy a guitar center or at some place. Rent that, from a know, production right, house. Exactly. They come, they build it, it looks right. the same, and then they tear it down. Yeah, a, a big part of it for me is, um, it's, you know, coming back to the ancient ways, it's, you know, using what's provided by the land. Don't, you know, we don't take advantage of it. We're not trying to trash anything. We're using what's available to us and and honoring the land. Well, I also noticed um, there's so many elements to Don't Trip. It's not just the music, there's the wellness part of it too. And we've seen that before, but there's something about that community aspect that's different, I feel, with Don't Trip because it truly, it doesn't feel like it's separate. It feels like it's in all of its integrated if that makes sense we, we work a lot on balance and i think that you know with the music programming he has in his background he's been working in vegas and he's seen you know the ins and outs of how to how to set up for artists and the artists that come through properly and you can see it that flow work with the music and we flow right into the wellness so it's you know the music can be it builds through the day and in the evening it's it's cranking high energy and then by the time the morning comes back around we're bring, we're grounding people down and into a meditation of state so it's not like party's done people are scattering trying to figure out where's the next place to go it's like no the energy comes down we calm it we really you know and and, and wash it away with you know the, the proper meditation breath work um, and the workshops you know learning about you know, the, the next thing to do in this world. What's the, you know, what's the next way to heal? Um, and that's going back to our roots and, and going inwards. Yeah, you said it best. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's a moment throughout the whole entire festival that it ends. It never has that feeling. It just feels like you're there the whole time. And the best part is it doesn't feel like you have to trip on anything, literally, <laughs> right? Like it just feels like it all rolls into the next thing. There isn't a moment where it's like, oh, okay, let's see what's gonna happen tomorrow or something, right? It's like the whole experience, the whole time is connected to each other, including you guys have vendors that are there that are incorporated with it all. And some of them come out and do things at some times and then they're out enjoying stages and then they're coming back. It's like really organic and really <clears throat> free flowing. And honestly, I've never been to any events that really have that feel. It always does kind of feel like you, you have to like kind of wait to the next thing or something like that, where it's like you make so many options available for everybody that it's almost like you have to make your own choice at, at some point of where you want to go in the experience, mm -hmm. which I think is super cool. So, but I want to come back to like, when you guys talked about building on the land, I mean, literally you guys 
used the land. I remember the main stage that is the big pyramid and watching, and I actually filmed you when you were DJing on it and just the, the, the look on your face when you were DJing was so, it was like a dream come true. Mm -hmm. But I also saw the background of literally, literally cranes out there and how, how did how did you guys make those stages and make that whole vibe out of the land itself? Was it was it logs that had already fallen? Uh, yeah. We, yeah, we we spoke with the the landowner and we said what we wanted to do. And you know, it's we're at ten thousand feet on a ski resort. Um, there's a lot of trees. Um, you know, it's you're in, you're in Utah, and there's also a lot of dead trees that they have. Uh, they need you know to remove for you know fire prevention, and we kind of helping the land along with that fire prevention and using those that wood for our stages. And um, I, we felt that was a good synergy to, to, to work off of. Yeah, and so about this location, what makes this location so special, you think, mm -hmm. for the specialty of Don't Trip itself as a brand? I've always said like with Burning Man, you know, there's, it's so far away from so many places and it's such a journey to get there. You're, truck breaks down, your trailer breaks down. And I, I, I ran stages out there for 13 years, so I've seen it all. I've seen trucks on fire on the road, you know, people fly in from all over the world and you have to prepare to live in this harsh environment for a week, you know, and it, and it makes the experience more special. And I think we have kind of a similar vibe because we're not in everyone's back door, you know, backyard. Like we in a, are in a remote location of population 3000, we're three and a half hours from any major city and even the major cities we're close to, Vegas and Salt Lake, aren't that major, you know? So um, it takes effort, it takes work to get there, you know? Um, and then once you're up there, there's, you're at high elevation, there's less oxygen, you know, you're on a ski resort with, you know, uneven terrain. And so you're working when you're going, even when you're dancing, you're working, as you probably noticed. Oh, I know, yeah. So I think, I think when you work harder for something, it, it makes it more special. You know, if you walk down the street to an event down the street from your house and you're bored and you come home, you know, it's, it's an experience, but it's not the same thing as if you would have driven two states over to get there and, and prepared for it for weeks and things like that. So being being reminded of the elements around you, I think, uh, brings you back to, to earth a bit. You know, if you, when you feel it, when you, we're, out, we're away from the power lines, you don't have the, the grid messing with your energy no. you, 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 you're you're next to the trees no yeah. cell phone signal no cell phone right. signal it's just um although we do have wi-fi so you can get some more <laughs> yeah. there is wi-fi and we got cabins too i yeah. mean you don't how i don't know how many camp outs you can go to and get a cabin with a hot tub i mean but that's what's cool about it is that even the cabins feel separate from the event but it's still close enough to be part of it which is really cool because once you're at that top of the mountain, you're at the tree line where the trees can't even grow anymore. And then you have the whole sky. And at nighttime, you can see every constellation. Oh yeah, it's insane. It's, it's insane. And, and because you're so high and so, nor and so north, and it's always held right before we come into summer, it's, the sunsets are at like 9 p.m. there. And yeah. It's just like a, a complete, I mean, it's kind of got like a heavenly feeling there. It does. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. I mean, you can, you looking at the stage, you can turn around and the mountaintop behind you has got snow on it, you know, and it's June. Well, and the other thing too is when you bring up that you're, yeah, I'm the, uh, it's, a, it's a ski resort. So yeah, it's like you, every stage is it's pockets, but like, it's not just like pockets, it's pockets in the forest. And it's so awesome being able to go on the adventure and it's not such a bad adventure that you can't do it, right? It's no, an exciting no, no. one and you guys, yeah put so much effort even just into the walkways going to the one stage and going to where the live band stage is and then going to the pocket where all the bass stuff is. Like, it's an adventure and it's so much fun, but the way that each stage has its own unique presence and its own vibe, you really can't find that, especially here in America, just like anywhere like that, really. Well, we'd like to think that we're, uh, we've got a little bit of a unique design style and that's kind of what is our our brand, um, you know, and I think that <clears throat> if you look back at, you know, the way the stages look, they've, they've got, you know, a, a, an ancient style to them, a little, like a culture. And that's the, that's, like I said, the, the triangle is what it reminds right. you of, of an old, an old time. And that's supposed to invoke some energy in the soul. And, 
and refresh us. Well, and talking about refreshments, that's the other cool thing is, I mean, there's that restaurant that's right there to get food and drink whenever you need it. You got a ski lodge. And, and, and the way that it's incorporated, it, it, it still feels like you're in this whole nature place, but you get the amenities and life that you still need, you know, or if you, if you do get an RV pass, or even if you get a car pass and camp, it's like, you guys have showers available for people. It's just like a complete, everything that you need and it all perfectly set up to where it feels like it's all in the right place, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And um, I really love that. Where do you feel the vision for Don't Trips going uh, this year that's maybe changed from last year or any of the other previous Don't Trips? Because I know they've been in other places. I've been part of those. And of course, being in the middle of the pandemic, which kind of was an interesting way with the name too, I always feel that like Don't Trip during the middle of a pandemic, right? Like to not have worry. And that was one of the best, uh, I think, feelings about it was everybody that was there was like, we were actually in the most opposite place. We were. Everyone needed it. Yeah. It, yeah. It was, it was yeah, great. like last June when we were, you know, one of the first events coming out of everything, um, you know, restrictions were just starting to ease and a lot of the big festivals were too big to still run. You know, some of them were trying, but they couldn't. Since we were small enough and the county was behind us and the state was behind it, um, you know, we had that opportunity to, to give people something that they'd been craving and people drove from all over, you know, we, you had fans, we had fans that drove yeah. from all over the country, Florida, yeah, New everywhere. York, from Indiana, Maine, Georgia, Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. But, but you, you guys know. got some flack for it. I remember in the, in the DJ community, people were kind of tripping, like, which I thought was funny, right? Don't trip. And people were tripping, like you guys are throwing an event, but the county was behind it. The, the state I mean, was, the at, mayor was in, at the right, time the we, governor was behind at the too. time we opened i mean my nightclub in vegas was open right. and operating you know we were allowed to be um with restrictions and stuff like that but um yeah we we waited till we were allowed to do it yeah and when we were told yes you can do it then that was the time to do it you know right you, you saw it was a big help too that's um, what yeah yeah we, you know the ones we did in california um, they're small intentional gatherings. They were off social media. They were focused on uh, my creative friends that didn't have an outlet to express the, for themselves during this time. And I noticed that was a big problem with how I was dealing with my stuff as an artist, as a musician, as a DJ. I didn't have those outlets. I wasn't creating any design for anyone anymore. Everything was on hold. I wasn't DJing. That was on hold. I noticed the, what, how, what it was doing to me. And I knew that my my circle of friends, all my creatives, were going to be struggling with the same thing. And that was what uh, the first uh, two were, was basically gathering our artists that needed to express and give them a platform and be hush-hush about it. Um, you know, and don't trip was, you know, please don't trip. Like, just leave us, leave us alone. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to do something here that's, we don't care what you think. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's not. I, I love it, to be honest. And being part of that, because it carries over, carried over last year into the one in Utah, is that same feeling. It doesn't matter if it's a pandemic or not a pandemic, that whatever there is in our lives going on, that there's that feeling of like, it's a space to where we can all not have to trip and enjoy life and feel the expression. If anything, that's the best medicine there is in the whole world. But I feel like now, you know, you guys have created something so great. You know, you guys talked about artist management soon, but really, really with this one that's coming up, what do you feel is is different now that you don't have to build the stages as much since the, the framework's there and now you can add on top I'd say of the it. work's never done. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, there was some decor elements that we didn't really get to achieve last year that we wanted to um, with, you know, limited time and resources. So we're gonna expand on those a lot. Um, one thing that I underestimated um, was the heat. <laughs> you know, coming from Vegas and in June it's 105, and I say, oh, it's going to be 72 of a high up there. It's beautiful. It's going to be great. What I didn't under what I underestimated was the closeness to the sun at 10,000 feet, and uh, yeah, that sun's strong up there. So we're going to definitely have more shade this year. Um, just little things that we learned along the way that we can enhance the experience for people. Um, 
more shade, more seeding, creating more like in the forest and at the, the wellness stage, which is going to be the subtle soul stage this year. Um, just creating a more comfortable environment for people to hang out to. Um, you know, you're not just standing at a stage. You can be in the back hanging in a hammock or on a, a couch made out of trees or, you know, something cool like that. That's and it, cool. It creates a vibe. I think the uh, I think the idea is always constant growth, constant change, embellishment, um, and and filling things in as they go. Um, and the campout's also not just the only element of what Don't Trip is. Um, you know, we like to hold intentional gatherings as well uh, on smaller scales, and then just a, a festival campout isn't necessarily about the huge lineup. It's more about the gathering of um, of, of people. You know, we find dear to our hearts and um and celebrating each other you know celebrating the the friendships we have um we have an event coming up here in two weeks a week and a half here in venice beach we're doing a free party and on, on the beach in venice um bringing some function ones and and letting people kind of catch a vibe and, and seeing what we're about um it's you know and we're looking into what's what's the next place what's the next growth um you know, I think we might have a, something special going on with, um, you know, the ski resorts in the summer. I think that might be a, a, a unique avenue for us to expand in different regions of the U.S. Um, keeping the boutique vibe. Keep, keeping it intimate, keeping it uh, natural, the elements of the of the land, um, highlighting them, not, never really using the metal trussing or anything like that. No big stage production, but... Um, honoring, honoring, the, honoring, honoring the elements that can uh, create the space for us. Um, I would also like to, um, you know, once the brand is big enough, start checking out some vortexes around the world mm. where I can gather more people and, and, and really enhance the energy of what we're trying to do here. Well, I think it's great because honestly, it, it's, it's, it's boutique and unique in its own way, but any walk of life and any person feels at home there. It really doesn't have a, a set type of person per se, the mm -hmm. event, which I think is the best part. It's all walks of life. It was a huge mix last year and, and it was a very friendly and open crowd with a lot of connections happening. You know, we've gone to a couple of festivals recently that, you know, it, you, you didn't just walk by and make friends. You had to work for it. And I felt at Don't Trip, the people and, and, and this could have been, you know, part of the people being locked up for so long and then getting out and just wanting to connect with people. And now that there's been so much connection for the last year, everyone's like, OK, I'm going to stay in my lane, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, you walk by someone and it would be a there would be a conversation started. And, you know, at other festivals, you walk by, sometimes someone might smile or nod at you or high five you or whatever. But sometimes everyone's just in their own space, you know, and doing their own thing. and. I felt that was a little different. It was just a lot easier to make connections and people were very friendly and, and wanting to connect with each other, you know. But I think having the whole atmosphere of not tripping, right, on anything makes people feel more comfortable too. And the brand and the experience doesn't feel like it wedges anybody out of a particular kind of music style or anything like that, because that's the other thing. You guys incorporate live music as well as DJs and with the wellness, and people have their own camps that are going on. So it's like a, it's it's just fully for all walks of life. And that's what I think is the best part because some festivals you go, it's kind of like, well, if I'm not wearing a certain thing, I might be judged. That's what I've experienced, right? So like, you know, I've been called the glam DJ cause like, you know, my lifestyle, right? But it's like, I go to Don't Trip and I've been to the first ones to the ones that are now big here in Utah, right? And it's like, it's been the same throughout the whole time. And I think that's the best part. And I think it's, it has a lot to do with how you both program the whole event. Now, everybody that you work with too, I know there's so many people behind the scenes that do so much work for Don't Trip. It's really, uh, it's, 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 it's my favorite thing to do of the year. And I do a lot of cool stuff. We've heard that from a lot of people. Yeah. And that, uh, that makes us happy for sure. Yeah. It's yeah. what, keeps us doing what we do. The, the feedback has been humbling to say the least. Um, just the, the energy, the appreciation people have for us doing what we're doing. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a difficult task. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think 
either of us really geared up to do this in such a scale so quickly. I know we did, you know, the first don't trip and the second don't trip were a month and a half apart. It was a September date and an October date. Um, that was a lot to handle, you know, and that was a, that was a big growth. You know, I, I was part of, you know, I, I hand built the stages. I helped hand built the state, the first stages of, of it, you know, and my wife, Celia is handles of the decor and the furniture and, um, Pagoda, she's our vibe conductor. She held, you know, our, our tea ceremony at the first one. Now she's helping out with, uh, bringing all the other artists and other elements into it. Um, Carrie is our wellness coordinator. Um, and she's, she's great. She, she's been working, um, she travels the world doing, uh, yoga events and, um, you know, everyone's got their own piece in it. Um, we, you know, Heather runs artist relations and Leah is our marketing coordinator. Um, CJ is our operations manager and everyone has their own role. Everyone kind of fits, fits in, uh, riskies, um, are a good, the wrench, the wrench. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of, he's kind of everything. He, he kind of jump around. He's a, uh, he's a great personality. Um, he's a, a, a big, big part of this. Um, but he's, uh, he's also got a big family and a big business he's taken care of. And just having his energy there is a big part of it. And our, our partner, Andy as well, he's, um, he's been a big rock. He's been here supporting me since the first one. He was the one that bought the first don't trip ticket. And, uh, you know, he came to enjoy the event, didn't realize I was actually throwing it. And, uh, the first, first thing he did was he helped, helped out with the gate and he just, he. I, I just recognized his energy and his support and, you know, it immediately became like he, this, he's family is part of this, part of this team too. It's just like you, it's like the, the, the amazing support you give me. And it's just, you, you see this support system build from something that was an idea, you know, and, and, a, and a message that I wanted to push along and, and seeing people react to that message and, and take it in. It's just like, it's unbelievable. It's uh, you know, it, it definitely, gives me the drive to, to do this. And, you know, Brett being, you know, just a powerhouse leader and, and handling the business aspect of it and, and, and our balance, the way we work is just, it's, it, I, I've never worked with anyone like this before. It's just, we, we get each other on such a level and it, it, and it seems like that's kind of the, the energy that don't trip is creating with others. People, once they get clued into the message, it's like, yes, like I, I, I get what you guys are doing. I want to, I want to help out in some way. And it's like, uh, that's, that's what I need. You know, I, I need the support of everyone to do this. I need the family to be behind me for this to be, you know, the message to be delivered. It's not just, it's not just us. It's, you know, it's, it's everyone in the community. It's everyone that comes, buys the tickets, comes supports, talks about it. It's, you know, it's, you, you, you have a special, connection and, and you share that and that's what's going to get that message out there and help everyone out yeah everybody who goes it's like everybody finds that within the community and it's also a, like an amazing support system just going there and finding other people and everybody being there for each other and having a great time and artists that come through i noticed feeling like they feel like family and that they enjoy the event, one thing you I'll see is I'll, I'll see artists that play and I'm seeing them in the crowd, right? Or I'm seeing them like enjoy it. Yeah, and that's one of the special things is it's such a remote location that we don't get a lot of these guys that fly in for a night and fly out because it's not, it's not that practical. I mean, yeah, a few do, but we, we prefer the kind of people that are gonna come out, set up for the weekend and connect with everyone and enjoy it and be part of it, you know? Yeah, and so what can we expect this year music-wise? What's, what's the kind of flavor that you are going with in this so, year? So um, last year with our live stage, we booked a little bit heavier on the jam band side, at least for the live stuff. And I didn't feel that it all hit as good as we had hoped. So, some of the bands popped off pretty good, like Super Bubble, who we're bringing back. Um, obviously, Dirt Wire, which was our big headliner, was a more of a hybrid jam electronica kind of thing. But um, this year we've pivoted a little bit more um, into like live electronica stuff. So Boombox being our headliner this year is kind of like a electronic jam band, if you will. Um, we've got a hybrid act called Balkan Bump. He's a trumpet player. He produces and, and makes amazing 
really cool funky bass music and rips the trumpet over it. He's also bringing another horn player and a drummer with him this year. Um, we discovered through one of our vendors in Idaho an act from Oregon called Free Creatures. It's a trio. They call themselves like psychedelic rock, hip hop, something. They, they, it's a it's a hybrid, a total hybrid. But um, uh, one guy shreds the guitar. Um, the female in the group uh, plays the upright bass, and then the guy Marv uh, does hip hoppy vocals and drum machine with MPC and stuff like that, and creates all the beats. And they're a super cool vibe. Um, even just the conversations with them, booking them, like they'd say things like, you know, if your fans don't like it, we'll buy you dinner. Like, you know, who, <laughs> said, who fucking says that? You know? All right, you're, you're booked, let's go. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to buy me dinner. Um, is there more acts this year? Because it feels like the lineup just is so stacked. There's, there's, a, there's a few more than last year, not too many more, but we've created more areas for them to play. Right. Um, we, we, we're adding on a, a dome that's gonna be like, kind of like a more of an enclosed disco, if you will. Well, not necessarily disco I music. I know that, that's badass. Not necessarily disco music, but an, more of an enclosed like space, especially like if we get some cold nights again, you know, it would be a nice place for people to get down and stay warm and also offer shade during the day. We can host workshops mm -hmm. or just, shaded lounge during the day and stuff like that um so yeah on the live stage we have a few of those kind of hybrid acts obviously kaipora is coming back they're great live duo um they've been playing since the first down trip mm -hmm. they're they're a fan favorite for everyone so we just we couldn't uh could not have them back was, along with red giant project too right. they've been they've been uh, on fire um they just they just played the do lab at coachella um they played the second don't trip and I, I just absolutely fell the in love Julian with them. The Julian one. The Julian was, one. And I was just, I yeah. was, I was in awe by them. Me too. Me too. I was blown away. Yeah. And so, yeah, we, we've got a, um, you know, we like to, we like to keep bringing back these unique artists that just shine every time. And I, you know, and they, we want to support their career. We want to, we want to keep pushing them along and, um, and 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 discover and bring out new ones too. yeah and, and discover and bring so out. so we've got we got this kid lucid he's a one man with a guitar and a didgeridoo and a mic and a turntable he scratches on and a bunch of other instruments and he just he makes and plays live um bass music and house and techno and he'll sing and he'll play the instruments live he's really really unique and really cool and kind of quirky mm -hmm. and funny too um our, so, our, our good friend Ophir, uh, he's coming back. He's yeah. uh, he's a DJ, plays the live guitar on top of that. Real sexy. He's uh, he's a vibe. He's a yeah. sexy man. He's a sexy man. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 do you think? Um, you know, a lot of festivals like they kind of have, of course, whether it's different stages and different styles of, especially if you're going to the dance music realm. What do you guys have? Like a certain kind of genre you say you like to stay in, or is it? It's vibes. You, it's all vibes. vibes. So even across genres, like everything feels good. I, I know for me personally, like Eric and I went to a major festival last year, which we will not name. And we walked around, we, we tacked on 25 miles walking around one night, just, and there's a over a dozen stages and everything we heard was shit. Everything we heard was obnoxious and aggressive aggressive and it didn't feel good like those kind of frequencies for me don't resonate very well mm -hmm. they make me uncomfortable they they can change the way i feel i can be happy and then all of a sudden I'm mad or right. have anxiety or something and, and it's 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 the delivery and the frequencies of the music and so for us we want everything to feel good and and to feel a vibe so and the forest you know like last year house and techno on the wellness stage, more underground styles of house and techno and, and even deeper in the morning and into yoga with down tempo and mid tempo. Um, the bass stage is not gonna be some in your face dubstep. It's gonna be deep psychedelic bass music that feels good and you know sounds good. The live stage, like I said, we're, we're, we're pivoting a little bit, but there's still a lot of couple jam bands, there's a lot of variety with it, um, but we are leaning more into the live electronica kind of stuff there, but a lot of really cool, talented people um, doing what they do. And you know, like you can walk from one stage to another and it's not gonna be this abrupt change where it's like some heavy shit or something like that. It's gonna, it's gonna feel nice and vibey everywhere you go, but it's gonna be different, 
you know, but it's all very palatable, feel good kind of stuff. That makes sense. I like that, especially having those 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 vibes that make you not trip. <laughs> because yeah. actually, you can trip yeah. just off the vibe of some music, yeah, like and, and put you absolutely. in a place where you're just like looking for an outhouse to just get away for a second. Absolutely, it happens you know all the mean? time. You hear something that just doesn't resonate. It's like, right. That makes a lot of sense because I don't feel like you know. It's like. I think almost like some people are maybe booking based off, well, this is the genre you play, but they're not really like listening to the music. It's just more like, just get it in there. It's that genre that's hot right now, or this is a hot new genre. Right. And I think over the last, like, the 2010s, that's what we saw, right? It was like, oh, no, dubstep's in now. So just because they're dubstep, play them without really like listening to them, or, or this is hot now, or house is back, or is it not back again, or people just got kind of just throwing what's the cool new thing without really listening to the vibes and there's been always so many djs that are pushing the most amazing vibrational positive music and they got looked over for so many yeah and that's what we're trying to fix and, and you know the other thing is with us i mean it's funny to say because we're both musicians and djs and stuff but it's not all about the music at this thing yeah there's yeah. music all night and it's it's a big focus but it's a beautiful property in a beautiful state with mountain bike trails, we do group mountain bike excursions. We have all the wellness workshops, yoga, acro yoga, you know, a, a huge variety of yoga infused with music, ecstatic dance, stuff like that. Um, group hiking, um, sound healing. Disc golf course. There's a disc golf course, there's a lake, five minutes up yeah. the road, you can go kick it out. You know, so there's, it's more than just a music festival, it's a, it's a, a get together of people that are like minded, you know, that want to share an adventure together. And I mean, after it last year, we all went out when everybody had left. That was and amazing. Really, we were able to see there's nothing around. Oh yeah. I mean, we were we were miles Except and beauty. miles away, and it was just so beautiful. It's not like there was just some house or anything. It was nothing. nothing. I remember talking to one of the police officers. He's like, "Yeah, you got about about a hundred, hundred fifty miles out that way. There's nothing." I'm like. Nothing? He's like, yeah, nothing. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and it's yeah, I had a blast hanging out just for a couple of days after the festival last year, riding ATVs. and Right. It's such an awesome property. I like how you both have brought up in so many ways how it really is about not one thing leading the charge, but the balance between it all, and which kind of encompasses the whole idea with the triangle, right? It's absolutely, but, absolutely. That's the that's the basis of, I think, what we what we're trying to do is is give that balance. I think, you know, the mind, body, soul, you know, if we can offer something in each channel for someone, it, it helps balance their energy and, and leave and be a better impact on society. Um, that's really the true mission behind on trip. It's to balance our family. You know, it's to, to remind them of the energy that we know we all share as a community and, and what's going to get us to this next stage of humanity that we need to get to. And I think that also is what diversifies our crowd too. Yeah. You know, having all these different things, you might get someone who's coming just for wellness or just for the live acts or some people that like everything, you know what I mean? That's why we get that all walk of life kind of, kind of crowd that, you know, comes together and creates new relationships and new crowds and new trends and new ideas, you know? Yeah, I think that's important since I'm a wellness person as an astrologer, but then I'm also a DJ. So I've been booked at a lot of events for just wellness and it's like th those people are in the corner and they're not as good as the music. That's what they do at a lot of festivals. So you just are kind of like, kind of the corner people. Well, sometimes you, know? you have to do that for sound purposes. Of course, keep, no, to, I understand, you know. but just the way that it's um, felt, the feeling. I agree, we were just at a festival that was, right? it was it was separated and almost out of the way because you didn't walk past Correct. there to get to anything else. Where at Don't Trip, it's always been integrated throughout the festival in a way that naturally flows. Balance. So nobody feels more Nobody feels anything more, right? Everybody feels together. And that's yeah, nothing's out of place. That's, that's what um, I think is the best part. So is there any last uh, remarks that you both have or last things that you want to say? Get your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Come support. Please Come don't trip.com. Yeah.
and thank you for uh, being such a big supporter on this. It's um, it's a blessing, uh, you know, having you in our, in our corner and um, supporting us and, and, and helping lead our our gathering with the astrology and, and teaching teaching our, our crowd. You know, I think that's a, a big part of it. I think that's huge. So thank you. No, thank you. I, I love it so much because it really is a place that feels like a family home and meeting new people all the time at every at every time that it happens is like it just grows and it's such a cool place and it's so much fun and honestly it feels like i'm a little kid again because it it really is an energy that feels free to be yourself and to not trip and honestly it does feel like you guys create a whole nother world and i think that's the best part is that you're bringing it back to a place that people haven't felt in so long it's almost like people, you, you forget how important life is between people and enjoying the time with people and having, having each other's backs and having fun times and having simple times that are beautiful and having the great environment that you guys create. So definitely make sure that you check out pleasedontrip.com and follow them on all their socials because they put up, you guys do awesome marketing and show off all the talent, the stages, and the way that the whole entire atmosphere is done. And I can't wait. Happening what? June 10th through 13th, right? June 10th through the 13th, correct. Well, make sure that you check it out. Thanks for both uh, giving us the story on Don't Trip and looking forward to not tripping <laughs> more and more and more. No, not tripping. Yeah, not that tripping. <laughs> Adios. Appreciate it. it. Cheers.